This is the Anarchist War Journal entry number 19, and this is the last interview I had at the Mises University with one of the professors there at the Institute. And this one will be Professor Mark Thornton, and he's done a lot of great work on prohibition, the failures of the war on drugs, and most importantly, minimum wage, I would say, in terms of its advocation for oppressing the poor, the minority, the youth. And with that aside, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay liberated. And here's the interview. Enjoy. Um, why is Austrian economics important to you? Well, I mean, it, it basically provides an explanation for how the world works. And there's no real exceptions to that. We can understand with Austrian economics, economic development, the success of capitalism, the tremendous success of capitalism over the last 300 years and what it's been able to accomplish. We can also understand the business cycle. We can understand poverty. So all of the manifestations of human action in, in this world, which are mysteries to most people, they don't, they don't know why they're rich. They don't know why they're poor. They don't know why there's social disruptions as a result of the business cycle or war. Why do we have to have war? Nobody knows. But with Austrian economics, you can really get a grip um, on these mysteries and uh, and teach others about it as well. Nice, yeah, that's kind of what I've been kind of picking up on as well um, here, and I've been kind of referring to a lot of the, the studies actually in the past couple of years. I didn't know a lot of the professors asked who were here, <laughs> Falco team members, so it's putting the puzzle pieces together. It's uh, kind of amazing to see all this kind of knowledge being put together here. Uh, the second question I want to ask is, uh, what do you think then of government and should it be abolished? Well. Uh, government is the monopoly on the use of force, and morally I'm against uh, stealing from people and jailing people um, uh, for wanting to keep their own property and things of that nature. So government is a negative uh, factor in society. It spends a lot of its time and money and efforts trying to convince all of us that it's really necessary, it's helpful, but if you take something like welfare, uh, we spend, in the United States alone, an enormous amount of money on welfare for the poor. But that welfare has not helped the poor. Right. Uh, we still have these poor people uh, in their lives not being able to really work and uh, to express themselves and to get some of the luxury goods that are now available to the common man. Um, it's really sad. and. And so we're, we're using all these resources. We haven't accomplished anything, and people would admit that. We're just having, it's like caged animals in many cases. So it's very unfortunate, and I think Austrian economics can explain uh, why it doesn't work. Well, the only people it works for are the people who work in the welfare bureaucracy. Uh, they're nicely um, paid uh, benefits, and so on and so forth, um, but that's not really a social purpose. Right. The, the, the a social purpose of having a bureaucracy to do no good for another large part of our population is uh, is irrational. It's very unfortunate, and it's very unfair to the the people who are supposedly being served by this bureaucracy. Right, and then now for great segue into for me to asking then, does minimum wage help the poor? No, the minimum wage does not help the poor. Uh, the politicians can talk about it all day long. They can always advocate for a higher minimum wage or a living wage uh, without really knowing the mechanics of what's actually going on in society. Uh, the minimum wage actually hurts the people who are most needy. Uh, so it hurts teenagers, it hurts minorities. Um, it's very destructive to uh, people's path into the workforce. So minimum wage jobs are low skilled, entry level jobs. And those jobs give people the basic job skills of showing up for work on time, of being respectful of your employer and your fellow employees, all those basic things that we need to learn along our pathway. I work for the minimum wage. Um, and, uh, and I've worked for less than the minimum wage when I was younger. Uh, and so the minimum wage just acts as a barrier to people getting those initial entry-level part-time jobs. Uh, and, that, and in that sense, it's very destructive 
to precisely who we think of when we right. think of the minimum wage. It's uh, we want to be helping poor people. We want to be helping teenagers. We want to be helping minorities. But uh, the economics of minimum wage laws shows that that's actually the opposite of the case. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, what does uh, free market anarchy mean to you? Well, you know, free market anarchy is everyday life. I mean, for most people, for most days, they go about their business, um, and everything seems to work out just fine. Um, you know, I've never really come in contact with the police or the courts or the military or any of that stuff. I, I very rarely have come into contact with even federal bureaucracy. Uh, the only time I was in, uh, came in contact with the state bureaucracy of Alabama was because I, I was working for it. <laughs> and uh, so that just shows that we don't really need any of that. Uh, and that it, most of it is wasteful spending, and a good part of it is downright harmful spending. Uh, the war on drugs is a prime example there, is it hasn't helped anybody at all, but it's destroyed uh, millions of lives, and, and particularly, you know, in minority communities, the rate of arrest is much, much higher, uh, breaking up families, uh, destroying communities, uh, without accomplishing anything, and, and in the process making the drugs themselves much more dangerous and harmful, uh, and society much more dangerous and uh, violent uh, as a result. So most of the crime, most of the violence, a uh, good part of the murders that take place, uh, and burglaries and robberies, um, are related to the war on drugs. Not drug use itself, but the war on drugs, the incentives it creates, and the, the fact that it rips the rule of law out of certain sectors, uh, certain areas of our economy. So it's, it's downright harmful. Every dollar we spend on the war on drugs, we're actually destroying, you know, multiple of that in terms of value, in terms of safety, in terms of welfare in society. Right, yeah, mandatory minimum sentences has done uh, nothing to kind of reduce the rate of, uh, I guess, crimes. Um, drug courts have now really done also in terms of reducing recidivism. Um, yeah, it's a great horror war on people uh, here versus um, like places like Portugal where they're trying to remove government out of that. And yeah, and, and all, the, all the places that I've looked at, and I've tried to look at them all, where uh, governments have enacted harm reduction policies, uh, so they've made addicts have easier access to needles, uh, they've taken away uh, imprisonment penalties for consumers. It's, all, it's always led to some improvement. Right. Uh, not necessarily always right. massive improvement, but if we look at the statistics, we can take great solace in the fact that the statistics back up or help illustrate uh, what economic theory would tell you about reducing the importance and strength and spending of the war on drugs. Right. And here in Rothbard's library, are you an enemy of the state? Yes, I am. <laughs> I am. Uh, but like Murray, you know, I'm not advocating violence. Or right. I'm not uh, trying to take over anything. I'm not trying to be the president. Right. Um, awesome. I think, you know, what, what, um, what that means is knowledge is the key to undermine uh, the strength of the state. And, uh, and that's what we're all about here in terms of bringing college students, uh, other professors and instructors, uh, everyday ordinary people here, and to try to teach them, give them knowledge. Um, and I think it's working. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor. Responsibility, yes, it's still a home. We should 
should know by now that the system is designed for our demise. If we have lives, we'll be left behind. The dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world?